Well, the federal government is now closer to bringing down the hammer than the dock workers strike at the port of Montreal. This is a critical port. Lots of goods and services across this country come through there. Now, the House of Commons voted 255 to 61 to pass back-to-work legislation. More than 1,000 dock workers went on strike Monday at the Montreal port. That's one of the busiest ports, crucial to the country's supply chains. Now the federal uh, back-to-work legislation still has to make its way through the Senate, so it's not a done deal. So there's some time for the union and their employees to come to some kind of terms. Now, the employer is the Maritime Employers Association. But will the federal back-to-work legislation tip the scale in the port's favor? What's their incentive now to actually try to compromise when there's back-to-work legislation? Well, let's ask um, Mark Hancock. He's the national president of the Canadian Union of Public Employees, CUPE. They represent the uh, 1,100 dock workers. Mr. Hancock, welcome back to the show. Um, the government's back-to-work legislation has made its way through the House quickly. First table the day after, just one day after your workers went on strike. It's already passed third reading. Uh, what is your reaction to how quickly they've uh, decided to invoke back-to-work legislation? Hi, Evan, and thanks for having me back on. I really appreciate this opportunity, and it's it's a sad day. It's uh, I'm sad, I'm angry, and, and you're right. It took one day, but even worse than that, they announced that they were going to do this legislation before we t- had hit the bricks at all. So there has been no incentive for this employer to, to negotiate with us, and really this has been the employer's end game all along. Okay, it's been two and a half years. I know there was a 10-day strike in August. Uh, You know, the government says this is critical. That cost $600 million. There's critical supply chain issues during the pandemic that we need. What is your response to that? Yeah, I I, I get that there's impact on on the business community, uh, on folks. Uh, There's also impact on on my members, on our members working there, the uh, 1,100 members that uh, we represent there. And this is not what they want to be doing. I think I talked about this last time we, we, we chatted a few days ago. But, you know, and I get there's an impact on the economy. I, I get all of those things. And this is really the last resort that we had. But I have to tell you, Evan, that the minister's comments uh, publicly and then in the House yesterday were, quite frankly, BS uh, around the essential goods. Uh, we have uh, agreed to. There's essential service orders in there. Uh, this, is, this is really, in my mind, the government and the minister uh, using COVID as a scare tactic to try and win public support mm. to this action that they've taken. Uh, if we had been, if we'd been refusing to unload cargoes or, or, or containers that had essential medical equipment, you, you can bet your last dollar that we would have been pulled into the courts and we'd be facing major fines. And I know that that was asked yesterday of, of a number of the liberal MPs and they couldn't give an answer because it's BS, my friend. Okay, yeah, I did. I also asked Philemon Natassi, the labor minister, I said that the union and the dock workers are offloading key medical supplies. She said, well, it's t- difficult to do that. But okay, that's your response to that. I spoke with the head of the largest private sector union in the country, doesn't represent the dock workers, but the head of Unifor, Jerry Dias, about this today. Uh, he said he was once in a similar situation in British Columbia under a different government. And he said, back then, I threatened to defy a federal government's back-to-work legislation. That actually uh, brought the, uh, the government back to the table. But he said, if I was in your shoes, and he's talking about you and the CUPE members, if there's back-to-work legislation, I would defy it. Are you considering defying it, or how will the union respond to the back-to-work legislation once it's actually passed? We're not, we're not considering defying it at this point. Our members are extremely upset. They're extremely mad. Uh, we'll be going to the Senate tomorrow. The Senate has, uh, I understand, invited representatives from the union and the employer to, to go and to uh, make a presentation to, to the Senate on this issue. I've, I've had a conversation with, with one senator. I know there's other folks in, in, in my union that are having conversations with senators as well. We're hoping that they'll do the right thing and push this back to the government and allow us some time to get to, to negotiate a collective agreement. And, and, you know, if this goes through with uh, uh, as it is now, we're going to consider all of our options. You can bet your bottom dollar that this is, this is an infringement on our rights as Canadians. And you can bet we've been in the courts a lot in the labour movement over the last couple of decades. And I can I guarantee you that we'll be looking at, at that as an option, and we'll be talking about this more with our members on how we mm-hmm. respond. I... Uh clock is ticking on this. Uh, Mark Hancock, always good to have you on the program, the QP national president on a really critical labor movement. Look, outside, of, if this wasn't COVID, this would be the leading story across the nation right now. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it.